and at the risk of nerding out too far. But it, the, <laughs> the podcast is called Bible Geeks, so I'm going to— We're back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bible Geeks Weekly Podcast. This is episode 153. I'm Brian Sheely. I'm Ryan Joy. And thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. We are back. We're back. Oh, man. Yeah. It has been a minute. Just right around the six-month mark, I suppose, since we were last on the air. This seems kind of weird. It is weird, because we didn't take more than one week of break for like how many years of, <laughs> it was oh, almost oh. two years yeah 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 well it's been a good break i mean i think i've needed the time obviously our life just kind of went upside down for a little while and having the time has been awesome i've missed talking to you i've missed the show but man sometimes having a break is good yeah it's like and then of course what is it nature hates a vacuum boy that time just got totally swallowed up by a million things so it <laughs> it ended up feeling like the right the right moment but I have been missing this and it's definitely time to get right back into it well big thanks to everyone who's stuck with us and uh, particularly we have a few of our devoted listeners who support us on patreon and I just want to say for those people who do, and who have continued to support us while we've been on break, thank you so much. It's been just super awesome to know that we could still come back and everyone was still ready to hear God's word. Hopefully the things that we're going to be talking about here are exciting and getting everyone back in the spirit of the show. And so let's talk about, I suppose, what it is that we're going to be doing. The last time we were here, we were doing this series called Training Wheels. It was our first guided study. And now we're transitioning to a new guided study, a 13-week study that we're calling Whatever is Good. And I love this thought. I love the thought of spending 13 weeks on things that are just great to think about. And so obviously, I think we're going to have a lot of really praiseworthy and good things to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hopefully going to be an encouraging kind of a uh, a quarter because it's there's a lot of things around us that sometimes it's it's hard to focus on on all the good things that the Lord does and and has given to us and all the virtue that he brings to our lives but it's easy to get caught up in all the other stuff all the noise out there oh, and yeah. so hopefully this is sort of a distilling a focusing of our hearts on those things that are going to give us a renewed sense of courage and joy and peace and hope and and trust in him that kind of doesn't let all of the noise drown out all the good things. One great way that we can focus, again, like you were talking about, sort of cutting through all the noise, of course, the way we always start our shows. And Jesus had some things to say in Luke chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, that I think really kind of set the stage. And that's where he says, no one after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. And when your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. And when it's bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. And so I think here, as he's talking about our eyes and what we see, really, I think the whole idea is like, What's going on in our hearts? Like, what are we allowing into our bodies? And the eye is like the doorway for those things to enter our hearts. Yeah, exactly. The doorway. Our eyes bring in light. Healthy eyes take in light and focus it on the retinas. I have, as you know, awful eyes, especially (laughs) my, my right eye is so, I'm so blind. And so the light doesn't properly focus on my retinas and nothing is clear. Right. And it's really bad when it's dark at night with my glasses off. It seems darker and harder to see the little light that there is, especially in my right eye. It's just like there's no light anywhere. It's It can be disorienting, actually. And so there's this, sort of this picture here. Imagine your eyes as the intake for light to come into your body. And Jesus says that through the intake of that light, your whole body is full of light. And maybe he just means the whole body gets the benefit of seeing clearly. But I picture a body completely filled up with sunlight as you open your eyes and you take in the light. I mean, it's just sort of the portrait that I see here. And and the point is that the light within you comes from what you take in through your eyes. 
and maybe not your literal eyes, but you can be dark or you can be light depending on what you're looking at and how healthy the lens of your eye is. So how is our lens? How is the lens through which we see the world? Is it bringing in light or darkness? Do we have a heart receiving the light of Christ or is it just a bunch of darkness? And it really is a good question, a good picture to start off this series with, because what we're trying to focus on is the light. And we're trying to point all of us, ourselves included, to these things that God has filled the world with, that God has filled his word with, that are true light through which we can we can see his glory. It is interesting, though, because you're talking about how important like this eye is. And I know here he's talking probably literally, but also, I mean, maybe more importantly, figuratively. But as Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, where he talks about your eye causing you to sin and if that were to happen, you should tear it out and throw it away mm. so that your whole body doesn't wind up in hell because of one of the members of your body. And this eye, which, I mean, arguably is such a small part of our bodies, is so, so important. And obviously, that's a big deal. Yeah. And you definitely can see that it's going to be huge impact if you're allowing negative and terrible things into your heart through your eyes. I mean, that's just that's not a good spot for you to be in. Yeah, I think. One of the things I always worry that someone is going to misunderstand when I start talking about a passage like this, like <laughs> this idea, Philippians 4, 8, and I, all of these things, is that we're saying everybody should just be sort of glass half full optimists all the time. And that's the point. And it's, it's good to be an, it's good to think half full kind of ways. That's great. But that's not what we're talking about. We don't pretend that there isn't darkness in the world. Or right. We don't just look on the bright side of everything. But it's it's we acknowledge what is out there and yet we focus on and dwell on the things that are going to build us up, build up our faith, help us to to trust in the Lord more, see who he is more, be full of the kind of attitude that really not just in Philippians 4, 8, but throughout the book of Philippians, Paul is is painting and throughout a, a lot of Jesus parables in, in Luke, he is helping us to see. Yeah. Well, this idea here, and I don't know if I was sitting in the audience of Jesus Day, I don't know if I would have like gotten caught up on this statement that he makes here, but did you kind of catch that there's dark light here in yeah, this statement? Yeah, that was weird. Is that like black light? Black light. Oh, it's a black light. The b <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not the black light, but uh, yeah, he's saying here, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. So yeah, the black light within you. It seems almost like the ultimate riddle, though. Like, you could imagine yeah. the people listening to Jesus saying these things. He's really kind of like bending the metaphor about as far as you can take it. But I think there's some really important truths here for us to walk away with. That, like, light and dark are totally opposite from each other. And we get that. That, that comparison's throughout the whole Bible. But, like, I wonder if sometimes I think my mind is full of goodness and full of wholesome things, like I've convinced myself of that, while it's really just darkness and negativity. Like, I, I know how easy it is to convince myself of things, and I know how easy it is to, like, look past things or tell myself a story about how things are going in the internal mm. weather system of my body, but, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I wonder if I'm really just telling myself that things are fine when actually everything's kind of on fire around me. Maybe my light isn't really light at all. And since Jesus is telling us to be careful here, I'm guessing that it's because it's not always straightforward. It's not always immediately obvious when something is seriously wrong with what's going on inside of your body, with when the light is sort of extinguished by the darkness. I, it, it must not be totally obvious to us. And that's, I think, why he's telling us to be careful here. Yeah, as you're talking about that, I keep thinking, picturing someone who maybe has lived all of their life in a cave somewhere that is just everywhere around them is almost completely dark. So what they think of as light and clear is relative to what they the, the darkness that they're so used to. And maybe that's maybe we're used to just our heart, our life, our thoughts being saturated in darkness. And that's why we need the light that Jesus brings, an external light. You know, notice that no one has light within them automatically. Right. The light has to come in in this parable. And, and so we have to have the light from God 
from Christ that comes into our life and shows us clearly what is really light and what is, what will really reveal all that's around us in a way that we maybe have never seen before as we grope about in our cave. And I like this thought. I mean, I think, you know, as we're going to be talking about good things, you know, you can have okay things. You can have like moderately not so bad things. But but I think this story here is really teaching us that like you got to keep excelling in pushing toward even better and better things, making sure that there is no part dark in your heart, that your whole mm. body is full of light, that you've extinguished all of the darkness that's there and that you're really just pushing for even better and better things in this good and wholesome and healthy approach that we're really talking about here. And I think that's the game changer because it would be real easy for me to just settle on something that's, yeah, okay. You know, it's not, it's not great, but hey, it's le- at least it's not as bad as, as that over there. And like, like you're saying, sometimes we never see how great something is until we've sort of experienced the other side of it where we can see that, oh, this is, this is what the alternative would be. And that's way worse. So let's keep pushing toward the best things and the, the most honorable and praiseworthy things. Yeah, Jesus' metaphor of light here just gives you all kinds of pictures. So, yeah, I, I really like that picture that you gave. And I think we've stretched stretched the light metaphor across <laughs> the, across oh. this. Uh, yeah, we I think we've stretched the light metaphor far enough, probably. <laughs> I think so, too. And maybe that's a good sign that it's time to move on to our second segment here. And that is Scripture Du Jour. What is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. I'll have that. All right. So we've talked about it and we've talked about it some more. Let's just talk about it again. And that's our (laughs) scripture du jour this week is Philippians chapter four, verse eight. And the verse, I think we could probably all quote it, but I don't know. You want to read it? (laughs) Sure. Yeah. So again, this comes in the, the climax, I think, of the book of Philippians. Verse four, famously, rejoice in the Lord always again i say rejoice and then he talks about about the peace of god in the verse before this guarding our hearts as we pray and give thanks and in the verse after this he talks about as we do the things of god him being with us the god of peace so right between the peace of god and the god of peace comes this verse finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So what does that make you think about? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's hard for me. I don't know what state of mind I'm in anymore. It's, it's always a guessing game. But like when I was reading this again with fresh eyes, I just kept thinking about that Steve Jobs quotation when he was announcing the iPhone for the first time. I don't know if you ever saw that or, or got a chance to I'll we'll throw a link in the show notes to that video but like yeah as, as Steve Jobs was announcing the iPhone he was like okay today we have an iPod we have a phone and we have an internet communicator and he like kept repeating those three <laughs> words over and over and over again and finally he was like do you get it yet what we're announcing is an iPod a phone and an internet communicator and they were all they were all the iPhone like Right. It was all one thing. And I kind of, as I'm reading through this list of things, I'm looking at like the term honorable here, whatever is honorable. And then he goes on to say whatever is commendable. And then he says whatever is worthy of praise. And like, I don't know, for me, those are all the same things. In my mm-hmm. mind, when I read those things, I'm thinking like, these are all part and parcel with each other. They're they're so hard to distinguish from each other that they might as well be the same thing. I mean, if you could give somebody a window into your mind, let them come in and kind of peruse around a little bit, like what things would they be seeing that you're thinking about? And would they give those things the stamp of approval? Like, would they be honorable things? Would they put it up on a pedestal and say positive things about the things that that are in your heart, in your mind? Would they commend those things? And would they praise those things? And like all of those words, all those ideas there are just like, shaking your pom-poms for the amazing things going on, the good things that you have an opportunity to think about. And I don't know, like, if there's a distinction there, I'm not really sure what it is, but, like, I'm just seeing here that all these good things are just so 
like woven together as being positive and everyone looks at them and says, oh, yeah, yeah, those are good things. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, there's you go to Steve Jobs. I go to there's an old West Wing quote <laughs> TV show that said strength, guts and courage. Strength, guts, and courage? You just said three things that all mean the same thing. <laughs> whenever, whenever you say three things that mean the same thing, the point is this is important, right? I'm yeah. trying to get this across. So think about things that, like, I like how you said that, that other people, if they could see in, would recognize as honorable. And there are standards that just God has written into our hearts that— that we we can't just follow what's in our hearts and everything. We we need his word. But Romans 2.15 talks about the law written on our hearts. There is a universal understanding that some things are just worth praising. Yeah. You know, when we see courage, when we see sacrificial love, when we see people being honest, people disciplining themselves to think the best and do the best and and so whenever someone, yeah, could see in my heart and in my mind, would they think that that, that is worth praising what's happening? And, and of course, no one ever will. No one ever will see it except God. But what is in our hearts is what determines what comes out of our hearts and what people do see. And so we start with those, those things at the roots. I love that idea, though, to, about it being just sort of a universal thing, like we all just kind of come to an agreement. Like, these are good things. And, you know, you were kind of talking about virtues there. But I think even in our study, as we're going to move on in, into the next 13 weeks, I think, you know, thinking about things like rest and singing and family and celebration and, like, all these things that are gifts from God that God gives to us and these talents and abilities that we have, I think anybody would look at those things and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Family is good. Rest is good. All these things that, yeah, I mean, maybe you could make it an idol or you could like hold it up too high, maybe. But like, these are honorable things. They're commendable, praiseworthy kinds of things. And I, I think a lot of people would be hard pressed to find negative things to say about all of the goodness that God pours into our life. Yeah, and I think that idea of this universal praiseworthy kind of kind of things is in the text. It's in these words and at the risk of nerding out too far. But it, the, <laughs> the podcast is called Bible Geeks. So I'm going to. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> these so a lot of these words are used either only here in all of Scripture or all of the New Testament, or they're not used by Paul or, or rarely used. But they're words that are very common in Greek thinking, Greek philosophers, like the the kind of things that the Philippians would have heard all their lives before becoming a Christian. Oh yeah. These are these are the words that they're using. These are the you know some of the great words of positive virtuous description of things, you know, commendable things. Excellence is one of the great words. These words lovely describes things that anyone would would love or would find amiable or winsome. So th there is this sense of kind of a universal appeal of some things. And it's like Paul is saying, the things that you always knew were good, those things are still good. And it's not just, it's not just things that are uh, from a, a Christian perspective or that you find in scripture that are good. There are good things all over. Yeah. And scripture is the, the ultimate examiner of these things, the ultimate standard as, as he, you know, you really see that in the next verse, but you can look around and when you watch a great movie, great movies almost always echo the gospel. They're about redemption through sacrificial love. They're about faith. They're about good things, great, great stories. Great. If you find something great in a, in a book or a noble example in someone who doesn't know Christ in some area of their life. You can appreciate it. You know, if you if you listen to something that's beautiful and lovely, you can appreciate it because ultimately all of these things rightly seen point us back to God if they truly are are honorable and worthy of praise. Yeah. These words are so important and like you say, I mean, I think the universal appeal of these words, I think it even goes far beyond like these words here. There's so many more things. And even kind of nestled within what he's saying here, 
he's kind of implying that there's a lot more things that are even in this list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I love that. It really, the words whatever and if there is any also point to that, yeah. I, that what you're saying that's that's something that usually we focus or at least i focus on these attributes true lovely pure commendable these are great words to think about but there is as you're you're hinting at an important lesson to take from the words right before those attributes so what do we get from whatever and if there is any, right, what, whatever <laughs> is true, whatever is honorable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise. So with if there is any, if there is anything worthy of praise, for instance, he sets a condition. So like the idea is if there isn't anything worthy of praise, you don't have to think about anything good. <laughs> I'm off you the can hook. just think about all, <laughs> all the guard. It's a condition, right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, some folks seem to think that there's nothing in the world that's excellent and good. It's all trash. It's all evil. It's all depressing and dis discouraging. Wah, wah. And if that's, yeah, if, if that's the way it is, then you don't have to think about anything good. But, but of course the implication is that there is good all around us and we can direct our thoughts towards all that that's excellent you don't need evidence that there are bad things we all agree there are lots of bad things <laughs> but if there's anything that you can find anywhere any corner of goodness we are commanded to dwell on that stuff so that's what we take from if there is anything he's really setting us up for a, okay, begrudgingly, I guess I can find good things and I'll think about that. And then, and then with whatever, that's really beautiful. He, he uses it six times whenever one time would have done the job. He could have just said, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise. I think that's how Grammarly would would correct his statement <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We use this app that corrects our, our writing when we're writing up these articles and we would never get away with whatever six times. Oh, no, no, no. But, <laughs> but, but when he says it six times, again, he's saying this is important and he's saying that we need to think expansively about all of this stuff, whatever the word whatever means as many as or whatsoever or all or everything that's good. And so it's this way of almost like creating a brainstorm, making us look for all the many things that are lovely. There's this discourse grammar expert. His focus is on how the New Testament uses language basically to get points across, how, how all language kind of works in a similar way, but applying it to the New, New Testament. His name's Steve Rungi, and he, he says it like this about whatever. Rather than a checklist, he has us conjure up a boundless set of items that fit positive criteria. His whatever is statement is like a fill-in-the-blank exercise. Our imagination is the only limitation other than the standards he sets. It eliminates the negative influences without hindering the flow of the positive ones. And so in that way, I think these attributes become both a filter and a magnet. We use them to filter, to examine whether something is worth thinking about. Well, is it is it true? Is it lovely? Is it pure? But it also has us constantly on the lookout, seeking all of the stuff, all of the true, all the lovely, all the commendable things all of the whatever is good. We're just looking all over for it. So I think that's really interesting how he may, how he does that. It's like he's starting this constant search for whatever is good and expecting that we're going to find it all over the place. We 100% should have played whatever is good Mad Libs on this episode. I mean, like the, the <laughs> fill in the blank exercise. I mean, yeah. come on. Like, that, that is exactly what he's doing here for sure. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean- Maybe that's a future episode. We, maybe <laughs> maybe in a study guide we can provide some oh, that's so Mad good. Libs somehow. <laughs> let's do that. So here we go as we close out this episode. Let's get into our final segment here, which is our reach out question. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. So our reach out question this week, something that we want to ask each other, maybe have this spiritually focused conversation is, has the noise of the world drowned out the good things of God in your heart? Like all around us, and we've been kind of talking about this, you know, in terms of darkness, in terms of noise, and I think it really is. Like it, it is an all-consuming kind of just dampening of the light of God. And sometimes 
I think we all go through that where we find ourselves just getting more into the darkness than we care to admit. Uh, definitely. And yes, it, it it has drowned out the good things of God in my heart at times. And, you know, whenever things get murky, I like to make a list. So I made a list of the ways that that sometimes happens as a way of really me thinking through what have I done and what do I need to continue to do to make sure that that doesn't happen. So five different ways here. One, one is I start the day the wrong way. I start the day thinking, you know, when I get up the first thing, if if I'm not intentional, then I can just sort of start on the wrong path mm -hmm. and with worry or with just some kind of negative thing. So I, I built a habit of starting the day with Thanksgiving and prayer. And then, as we've talked about before, I try to I don't allow myself to do anything on my phone before I, I go to scripture and so just kind of being intentional about how I start. And then at the other end of the day, I'm a I'm a late night thinker. I'm a late night person anyways, <laughs> as you know. You no. Know. <laughs> I mean, it's been and six so, months. You haven't like grown out of that yet or no? <laughs> no, no, okay. no. Nope. It's it's pretty built in. And so <laughs> I, I can really get myself in trouble with the spiral of worry or of just thinking bad stuff at night and just Everybody else is in bed, asleep. You're just laying there. You know you, you just should lay there, so you want to go to sleep, but you're just spinning. So again, I have to be intentional about where I let my mind go at night. Um, real, another really dangerous thing for me, I can listen to or read or watch the wrong things, yeah. and, and that sneaks up on me. Sometimes I think I'm stronger than I am. Well, this isn't a big deal, and I, I allow garbage in and you know bad bad <laughs> eyes right Let's go bad back eyes to, yep yep back, back to luke yeah I'm letting garbage in that brings darkness in and i and i allow my conversations sometimes number four my conversations or the other things in my environment you know the people i'm with the things that i've surrounded myself with to go the wrong direction i have to aim conversations or what i'm talking about is be going to become what i'm thinking about and that's going to become what sticks and then finally number five I don't realize sometimes that I'm thinking about or even obsessing over unproductive things. Yeah. And that's why I have to build these routine interruptions into my day. People who are around me just have now gotten used to the these alarms, these prayer alarms that go off. And, you know, I don't I don't like leave people and then go and drop to my knees. But if if I'm if I have the space, I just it's a it's a stop. It makes me say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make myself get on my knees. I'm going to make myself talk to God. And then that brings me from whatever I'm stuck in and lets my mind, my thoughts go to an eternal perspective. And so those are five ways that um, the noise of the world sometimes has drowned out the good things of God in my heart. What about you? Does this ever happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. I think it happens to everybody. I, I, I don't know if you yeah. can be a human without just sort of letting the noise of whatever is going on around you, like start to infect you, start to really just change your perspective on things. And I love those things that you listed there, because I think that really does sum up a lot of the challenges that we all face. And I know I've faced all of those myself. Although, I definitely don't like stay up super late and I, I'm a, I'm <laughs> just pretty much in bed on, on time. But just the, the other things I can definitely shut relate off. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know for me. And I was kind of thinking about this just in the context of like the last six months for me. And the noise has absolutely increased in our life. Just if you can think about money concerns and you can think about health concerns and you can think about just family drama, potential family drama, and like all the things that could have happened or could be happening to us right now. But I, I feel like even in all these things that that our family and, and I have gone through, my noise cancellation has gotten way better. <laughs> you know, just thinking about like, like the ability to cut through all that stuff. You know, we've been sitting in meetings with like lawyers and financial planners and even just talking to friends. And like there are people in our lives who honestly seem pretty shocked by all the things that we've all gone through recently. But then yeah. these same people are also surprised, especially those who don't know the Lord. These people are also really surprised, like how well we've functioned and how well we've handled things through this time, which I guess is not really a self-congratulatory kind of thing. But like, you know, just to say that when when we can see 
the other side and we can see the hopefulness even in in death even in disease even in like long-term cancer diagnosis and stuff like that like there are things in life that you just you can see past when you have a relationship with the lord when you know how good god is and how much he takes care of us and what we have waiting for us someday i think it's so so much easier to like cut through all that noise and you know it's not to say that like it, it hasn't been difficult and stressful and hard like it totally has been but like like you say when you come through those times and you're prayerful about it and you're intentional about how you're spending your time i think like for our family right now we're thinking a lot more about our time together and we're thinking about like how how do we take care of each other you know how do we continue to be a blessing on people's lives the way that dad always did like for me as much as the last year could have like knocked me down or could have knocked our family down i think it's just highlighted the goodness of God even more in the fact that he's cared for us, he's taken care of us. And despite all the things that have that's happened to us, I mean, God is still good. And that's that's something that helps me, I guess, cut through the noise way better than than maybe I would if I didn't have that kind of hope. Yeah, that's awesome. It's also awesome that you're sharing it with us because like you say, we don't we don't like to talk about this stuff um both because it's the hard part of it and oh, yeah. even the good part of it where we're seeing the good, but we don't want to sound, like you said, self-congratulatory, but we all need to be able to see each other go through these things and God at work in our lives and um, and, and uh, what you're doing, what you and, and your family are doing is exactly what we're talking about. It's like the perfect illustrate. You're your noise canceling, your your uh, <laughs> your spiritual AirPod Pros that you've developed yeah. are like are these thoughts, these ways of recognizing the good of who your dad was here on earth, the joy that he's experiencing with the Lord now, the way the Lord continues to bless you, the way the Lord is going to see you and all of your family through whatever comes next, the way that there's always good to be seen, you know the kinds of virtues to hold on to, you know how to hold on to faith and and to love each other and to, you know, those are the things that other people who don't know the Lord are seeing and those who know the Lord are seeing and are affected by. And those those are the things that are, are like you say, n- not, it's not sticking your head in the sand like an ostrich. <laughs> Supposedly ostriches don't do that, but, but it's, it's not doing that. It's recognizing that through the darkness and even because of the darkness it is why the Lord has done the work he has and what the Lord is overcoming, not just in the cross, not just in the end, but every day in the lives of his people. Yeah, it's really good. You know, you could miss it and it would be real easy to miss it just self-focused and you know retreat into myself and like have have the pity party and that's happened cutting through that noise though seeing that things are good and you know especially to know that like you say i mean this is my story but i've heard so many other people's stories who's been through worse things than i have who've been through similar things that i have and even just watching them is motivating and helps me see that i'm not the only one going through this stuff and Plenty of other people have gone through this stuff and not to minimize anybody's pain or whatever anyone's gone through, but like just to know that like people are able to weather the storm knowing that they have this peace that comes from the Lord. And that's, I, you know, if you talk about anything from Philippians, I mean, the whole idea of Philippians is just joy, right? I mean, it's all mm-hmm. about peace. It's all about joy. And it's all about just seeing all the amazing things that can happen in our lives. And I think that leads to our challenge this week. And yes, this is our first challenge in six months. So let's get on it. I am ready to face (laughs) any challenges that might be foolish enough to face me. Yeah, it's funny. You bring up Paul and Philippians and the joy that that Paul had. Paul couldn't actually change much of his environment no. as he's <laughs> as he's imprisoned while writing. You know, he talks about his chains as he's writing Philippians, and yet he still has this kind of just this heart that transcends his situation. But our challenge is for those of us who can change things. If there's something that is bringing you down or is taking your heart from these good things. 
change your environment to support praiseworthy thinking. And it's just a real thing that our environment affects what we think about. Oh, and yeah. so if there's something that we can we can shape our behavior and our thoughts by changing something up, it's worth doing sort of a, an examination and looking around at all of your points of contact with your world and seeing what you can do. I mean, it could be as simple as I'm going to put this encouraging verse taped to my steering wheel so that <laughs> before I go and yell at the bad drivers on the freeway, I'm going to have this verse or I'm going to, you know, it could be just really simple things. Yeah. But whatever it is, something that's going to help you think the right way. I was just even thinking about this, too. Like, I've had a couple of moments over the last few months where it was just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go camping <laughs> or I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go take yeah. a walk. Like, even just yeah. changing your environment, I mean, very literally, like being in a different environment or being in the environment writ large, like that's a good place to be. So there's all kinds yeah. of things I think that we can do to to tune and shape the the situation that we're in and sometimes that's going to have a huge impact on our mental state i know it has for me absolutely yeah what a, what a change a walk can make that's something <laughs> adrian and i find so often so i will go from there from our challenge to our reading assignment for next week because we're going to be starting up our first guided study session in the whatever is good series and we're going to focus on nature so we're going to start out by looking at God's good gifts, and then we're going to talk about God's virtues later. But as thinking about the created world that God has given us and all the good things, thinking about waterfalls and giraffes and Saturn <laughs> and walking <laughs> walking around through, I don't know why that random list popped in giraffes. my head. <laughs> oh, Saturn. welcome back to the show. I love it. <laughs> But but yeah, I mean, you know, think you were just talking about going for a walk and mm -hmm. how being in the environment changes us. So here's the reading assignment to get Hanging us out with the giraffes <laughs> thinking about these things. Matthew chapter six, verses 28 to 30 and Genesis one, the whole chapter verses one to 31 and Acts 14 verses 15 to 17. So if you get a chance to read those before we go through our next conversation, that'll kind of prepare you for what we have to say. Yeah. And so I know at the very end of last episode, you know, if you're just sort of rolling through this thing chronologically after the fact, like, yeah, we have been gone for six months and it's really nice to be back. But we will put in the show notes the PDF that we had of all the guided studies from our training wheels series that we did six months ago. And hopefully you find that useful if you want to have your own Bible study surrounding those things. But this episode starts off this new series, Whatever is Good. And so if you want to go check out our daily download videos, they're going to be starting next week on Monday. These videos are all going to be conversation starters. And over the next 13 weeks, as we go through each of these guided study sessions together, we're going to use these videos, use these conversation starters to kick off our episode, to kick off our conversations. And if you want to have these conversations on your own, you can have these conversations with a friend, with a group, with a, a Bible class at your church, whatever you want to do with these things, they're freely available to you. Go to BibleGeeks.fm, or for this series, you can go to BibleGeeks.fm slash good. Yeah, because it's good, <laughs> and hopefully it will be <laughs> for everyone moving forward. Yeah, I'm excited to get into this. Uh, this will be, I can't believe this is only our second guided study. But, I know. Uh, <laughs> it feels like we've been doing these a while, but it's only number two, and I think it's going to be a good one and a good change of pace from, from the parenting series we just did. Yeah, if you thought parenting was heavy, maybe hopefully focusing on just good things is going to be a little bit more lightweight, so... We're excited. We're excited to be back. So thanks so much, everyone, for tuning into the Bible Geeks podcast. You can find us on our website at BibleGeeks.fm. You can find show notes for this episode in your podcast player of choice or at BibleGeeks.fm slash 153. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our daily download videos, like we said, starting on Monday. We'd love to have you follow along and share those with a friend. And until next week, everyone, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom. Shalom.